Cabrini tells the true story of Mother Frances Cabrini, an Italian nun who came to New York City in the late 1800s to help the severely impoverished Italian orphans. At one point in the movie, she's visiting the site of her future orphanage at a location called West Park, which overlooks the Hudson. She immediately knows that this is the place where she's going to relocate her orphanage. She looks out the window and she says, I shall be buried here someday. And she did in fact utter that quote in real life, only it was when she went to a little cemetery just over the brow of the hill on the property. In the movie's epilogue at the end, we're told that she did did get her wish of being buried on the beautiful grounds of the property. Only what they don't tell you is the more morbid side of the story that began almost 16 years later. You see, Mother Cabrini had left such an impression on the world through all the hospitals, schools, and orphanages she had established, a campaign had been launched to make her the first American saint. One of the requirements in the process of sainthood is that the body be exhumed and examined. In the Roman Catholic Church, it takes two miracles to become a saint, and they used to consider a body that had not decayed as being one of those holy miracles. So in the fall of 1933, after almost 16 years of being entombed, Mother Cabrini's body was exhumed from a vault inside of her mausoleum where she had been laid to rest on the grounds at West Park. With regard to the condition of her body, one of the undertakers, a man by the name of John Perrazzo, stated, The skin was discolored, but her features were just as they had been. It was wonderful, he exclaimed softly. Her body was moved from the grounds of the orphanage at West Park to Mother Cabrini High School in the Washington Heights neighborhood of Upper Manhattan. It was entombed in a crypt to the left of the altar inside of the high school's chapel. It would remain hidden from view until it was exhumed again in the summer of 1938 when it was examined by a delegation from Rome. According to the Daily News, they found that the body was unusually well preserved and that the skeleton was entire but that the signs of preservation did not appear miraculous. That description is vague and somewhat generous. In reality, the apostolic delegate from Rome found her almost turned into dust. Apart from a bit of skin on her face and arms, the rest of Mother Cabrini was, quote, subject to the laws of decay. The undertaker, John Perrazzo, removed a bit of her body and placed it in a tiny replica of her casket and gave it to one of the delegates to be taken back to Rome. Fortunately, airport checkpoints back then weren't as tight as they are today, because you can imagine how that would go today. Uh, sir, what do you have in that tiny coffin? Uh, I'm just taking a bit of Mother Cabrini on the plane with me. Oh, uh, stir, you're gonna have to step aside. I mean, at least today, he, they'd probably make him pay for an extra seat. The head and heart of Mother Cabrini were also sent to Rome for veneration as relics of the flesh. When it comes to sainthood in the Roman Catholic Church, there are three types of relics. A first-class relic is a part of the body. A second-class relic is clothing. And a third-class relic is anything else that the saint used or touched like a hairbrush or a pen. And some of these things are on display at the St. Francis Cabrini Shrine in Manhattan. Now, what you don't hear much about is that the Vatican actually has a mummification team that has gone to great lengths to figure out how to best preserve the bodies and body parts of revered figures like saints and popes. When it came to preservation, there was success and there was failure, and you can definitely read about some of the horror stories with regard to some of the failures. As it pertains to Mother Cabrini, her body was in far too bad a state to preserve, and what is on display today is most of her skeleton, which is hidden beneath her black habit. The Vatican had kept her badly deteriorated head, and what you see today inside of her crystal coffin at the St. Francis Cabrini Shrine is a wax replica of her head. Also inside of her crystal coffin, you can see her hands, which are also made of wax. St. Francis Xavier Cabrini was beatified in 1938, and she was officially canonized in 1946. From 1938 to 1959, her body had been displayed in the chapel at Mother Cabrini High School. It lay inside of a hermetically sealed crystal coffin with gold-plated brass fittings. It was then moved to the St. Francis Cabrini Shrine, which was built next to the high school, which is where it resides to this day. You can see her for yourself by visiting the shrine located at 701 Fort Washington Avenue in Manhattan. And just out of curiosity, let me know in the comments, how much would you have to be paid to stay overnight locked in the shrine with the body of St. Francis Cabrini, or what's left of it anyway. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. 
If you want to learn more about the Cabrini movie and how it compares to the true story, check out our article over on historyvshollywood.com that's linked in the description below. Anchors away, my friends.